Hello, so today we're going to take a look at a trailer that I bought yesterday. So this is a 2018 ATC 7x16 aluminum trailer. It's uh, almost entirely aluminum. There's uh, just the torsion axles are about the only steel that they've used on this uh, body. So it's got torsion axles, they're uh, 3,500 pounds each. Overall trailer is 7,700 pounds, so it puts you at about a 700 pound tongue weight. So on uh, a lot of the older vehicles like this one, you're going to need to have a, uh, a load distributing hitch if you want to go to max weight. The Jeep here is rated for 7,200 pounds, so uh, you'd be sitting around a 700 pound tongue weight. So uh, we'll take a look at the vehicle. It was uh, used for commercial service for about a, a year and a half delivering cookies. Uh, I've got some receipts in the back of it. It seems like he can carry between 500 and 1,000 cases of cookies. And he went to, uh, I don't know, a half a dozen different towns in the area. And over the time that this was in commercial service, he put 36,000 kilometers on this trailer, which is about uh, 21,000 miles, I think. So uh, it's been worked. It's got some issues. So uh, that's why we're kind of doing this video. So. Uh, one thing that happened with this uh, jack here was it was on like a six inch block and uh, there was a windstorm that went through a few months ago. And it fell off of a six inch block and it broke the gear inside of this so you couldn't, you can't lift it up or down anymore. We'll take a look at the tongue. I was wondering how they mounted this to the uh, trailer considering that the trailer is aluminum and the tongue is steel. So uh, I think that they're grade eight bolts here that go straight through and uh, out the bottom the safety chains are hooked onto the front ones and then there's another one that goes through here Let's see if I can get the camera in I can't see what the camera is showing but I can confirm I see a, a nylock bolt on the other side of this so yeah I think that's a nylock bolt there as well or not as well some point he lost the end of the cable so not a big deal something that's easily fixed so uh, the tongue rust on this pretty quick I think partly because it's used in the winter I don't know if there's any uh, galvanic corrosion here between the aluminum and the steel I'm gonna take that tongue off at some point and paint it and I'll find out if there's any uh, protective coating in between but I would say there's not so you might be wondering where the battery is for the emergency brakes on this. We'll see that in a minute. This has uh, brakes on both axles, as I've been told. I haven't looked to verify. But uh, they pull nice when you're using the brake controller. It's like a parachute. Even when you're unloaded, like you can kick up the gain. So it pulls you back. And that can be a positive if uh, you're losing control. If you start to jackknife, you might want to use that to get things back under control. But you'll want to read up on that on your own, don't take my word for it. So, uh, yes, we're going to talk about the battery. It's underneath of the trailer. Sometimes they're on the tongue. Sometimes they're inside the vehicle. But this one is under the vehicle. It's got a light on it, which says it's charging. So I can see... Uh, it says charged, you know what the middle one says, and charging. So, uh, yeah, whatever. It's about two years old, so I'll have to go under there and change it at some point. The wiring seems to run under this side of the vehicle. This one's been upgraded to 16-inch uh, spacing, like centers, on the uh, floor joists. So they're about 14 inches in between. And uh, I think it might be uh, treated aluminum. I'm trying to think of the term of it. That eludes me. But anyway, you can see the box is open at the end. The tongue uh, goes quite a far distance down the back. Take a look at the ratings. So this has got a commercial inspection sticker on it. I think uh, this is November 2017 and it's good for a year. So I think they might do that when they import them. 
he should have been keeping this up because he was using his vehicle to work but maybe because he didn't have any stickers on it to indicate that it was a commercial vehicle he may got away with it so you can see that the loading on this is 5796 pounds which is excellent because of the uh, it's got an extra 700 pound gross weight on it because of uh, the way the tongue is done not all the trailers are going to have that and also uh, it's aluminum so it's lighter so it could be conceivably a thousand pounds more cargo than you could carry in a uh, equivalent steel trailer and that's important because this thing has got a lot of space inside of it so uh, I guess we'll go over the, the problems that it's got on the outside and then we'll pop onto the inside so like I said the tongue jack is broken not really ATC's fault but at the same time they could have stepped up and put a better tongue on it so if you had a pickup truck you might have trouble putting your tailgate down you might be able to get a jack that swivels on the tongue here I don't know if there's enough space or not a little bit of instructions on how to chain up so with the Jeep you can open it no issue there It doesn't have uh, marker lights up top on the front. It's not eight feet or eight foot six, so I guess it doesn't need them legally. It's got the uh, diamond plate on the front here. Whatever fasteners this company used, sorry I've lost track of where I'm looking, suck. They're not uh, stainless steel fasteners, so that's not great for Canada. I'm going to go over and change uh, the fasteners on the outside as best I can. I think they're a double square. They don't necessarily look like they're a Torx fastener. So this is bonded. If you look at some of the ATC videos, you can see that they uh, don't use too many screws anymore like they used to. They've kind of stepped up their brand, going for a, a certain look. This drip rail is only done on the face. You'll see an issue with that on the other side. Fenders take a beating. They're aluminum for one, right? So anytime you catch a snowbank, you're going to screw them up. That's just a fact of life. They all look like that. None of the uh, fender lights work for whatever reason. I haven't gone in to figure out why. There's supposed to be a latch here for the uh, door and it's torn off. And you can see, if they had gone through the trouble of putting screws in through the bottom, whenever you snag something with the trailer, you wouldn't pull out this decorative trim. And I gotta figure out if there's a, a stud behind where this uh, latch goes. It's supposed to catch onto here, but it's uh, not working. So the back lights work generally. The uh, trailer, the license plate light kind of flickers a bit though, so I have to replace that. Again, the, the fasteners that they use suck. So I'll have to try to go through and change these. You can see that you can uh, get to them from the inside. Those look like big torques. They're not square drive. I'm not sure if I can focus on that or not. Hopefully it's focusing. So, uh, he's obviously hard on equipment. So he's caught this on the side of a door somewhere. He's pulled the hinge and this door doesn't close quite right. I'll figure that out. It was dry when I got it, but we'll take a look inside afterwards. You can see the aisle he had where uh, he had cookies on both sides. And you walk in through uh, the man door by the looks of it. trailer.com so ATC used to make steel variants of their trailers but they don't do that anymore they've kind of tried to go premium this trailer is like twice the price of uh, a cheap trailer I'll tell you that I paid as much for this as you could buy a really cheap one on sale for brand new 
So this uh, latch here is tore off. Not too sure what happened there. Pretty good spacing. It looks like the sheets are about four feet wide. Again, the uh, fender's tore up here. He's got one Carlisle tire on here and the bead is smashed on this wheel. So I think he probably curbed it and tore open the tire. And uh, at 36,000 kilometers, I think that the tires were pretty much due for replacement. The rear axle tires are definitely worn down to the wear bars. It seems that the front axle ones uh, do a bit better. Looking at it here, I can see that there's drums on both axles. So he said that when he got to about 35,000 kilometers, he had the brakes done on this. And what he did was he took the uh, backing plates off and threw out all of the brakes. He just replaced everything from the backing plate out. And he said that that was the cheapest and least labor to do it that way. So that's something to keep in mind. So again, this light's not working here. There's another light here. It doesn't work. I haven't taken the trouble to figure it out. Like I said, I've only had it for a, a day yet. There's another light up there working. So, like I said, he's hard on stuff. So he snagged this door on something and he's pulled the uh, extruded aluminum past the uh, sheathing. So right now I can't really open this door. It's uh, quite cumbersome, but it's got a deadbolt here and then it's got another uh, lock here. And you use these in conjunction with each other. So the deadbolt during transport but it's, uh, it's pretty tight. I can't do much with it right now. It pulls nice. I found that if you're on like a, a lower speed road that's really rough, I did get some really hard side forces on the tongue. I've not really felt that before. I'm not too sure uh, why that was, but it's something I'm a bit concerned about because when I have another 5,000 pounds of cargo in here, it's going to be heavier than a Jeep and it could uh, spin the Jeep around. So I got to learn a little bit more about why that's been happening. So yeah, the diamond plate's about the right height and it catches most of the stuff. There's a bit of slush, but my wheels stick out past my guards. So definitely put mud flaps on your vehicle, it'll protect your trailer. There is uh, rust in the paint, I don't know if we can see that or not. But that's from him running the brakes down steel on steel. That's a pretty common result if you have a white trailer or a white vehicle. You get rust on the side of them from when you wear out your brakes. So don't do that. Replace them before they're toast. The cable is about uh, the right length. We'll take a peek from this side now. See what we can see for wiring. As I said, it looks like it runs down. Yeah, that side. So it's got nice welds on it. They double up the uh, frame rail near the uh, torsions. It's not hammered together. The nose looks pretty good. Sometimes they cheap out on that. They don't want to do the work to make it all fit nice. See the brake uh, battery there. See the brakes on both axles. Looks like he's got waterproof connectors on the uh, wiring where it goes to the torsion axles. Just got some slush on the screen here, just watch out. Hopefully that fog goes away in a second. So uh, you could go two ways with these trailers. They say they sell them with double springs. And double springs are kind of neat if you're on uh, rough roads because they have an equalizer bar between the wheels and they'll walk over the bumps, whereas uh, these torsion axles, you gotta keep them very level. Otherwise, you're gonna have the weight on the uh, axle, whichever has uh, the lowest clearance. So if you had a really high tongue, the rear axle would be carrying all the weight. And if your tongue was really low, it would all be sitting on the front. So that's not good. You'll overload the axles by doing that. But these are, uh, a lot less maintenance because there's no moving parts, there's just some rubber cords. 
that these mesh into. So that's pretty much the outside. We'll take a look on the inside now. I'd say that's unintentional. That's just because the fender is torn. How would you read? It'd be tricky to reach in there. Yeah, things are definitely out of alignment. But anyway, that's life. So there's a bit of water on the back door that's related to it not closing right. It's been sitting for about a year from when he went out and reclosed his business. So it's got two lights in here. I noticed that when the Jeep is off, it cuts the power to the trailer. But uh, I was a bit concerned because he's got tape on the uh, switch for on. So I guess if, it's not a freeway switch, so if you're coming in through the back, it's, uh, you have to open the side door and turn on the light, so he just taped it on. And that seems to work. So there's your deadbolt on the bottom, and then another uh, latch, like an RV type thing. There, they've got a trough here. You can see the wiring to the light. So they run the wiring along this trough, and there's some note here as well. Only in one language. Interesting. I'm used to two or three languages these days. So this is uh, this stapled on. I thought it would be pretty good for catching water, but uh, I guess not because it's not bonded on. So it also has upgraded uh, studs on the walls, so there's 16 inch centers. Again, you can see these uh, screws here I need to learn more about. So if you wanted to insulate this trailer, you could because it's not nailed on or something like that is pretty reasonable for taking it apart. This one has a vent. I suppose I'd rather it didn't have a vent. So I'm going to be using this for storage and I don't have good experience with these vents. They eventually leak. So when they put the uh, roof on, the cheap ones, they just slide a thin piece of Luan mahogany plywood over in between here so that they don't rub. But on the ATC, they've actually got some like 3M double-sided tape here that they put on and they bond the uh, roof to the, uh, whatever you want to call that, the spacing here going across. So they didn't upgrade the roof on this. It's a 24 inch spacing for these. I don't know if you want to call them beams, perhaps. This is not really a truss. Neo sells a round top trailer. I had been looking at that and I could have bought a better condition Neo trailer versus this one, but uh, the Neo had springs on the axles. It didn't have the extra 700 pound capacity on it. And uh, this is more of a, a commercial trailer, although I've heard good things about Neo. So that's why I went uh, and paid, uh, I bought this trailer instead. So uh, it's a fairly large trailer on the inside. You see that they've caulked uh, the interface between the wall and the floor. This is supposed to be better than plywood because it doesn't absorb water and peel up like plywood does. And uh, after a year of service, day in and day out, that seems to be the case. You can put like rubber matting in here from horse stalls if you want. And uh, Take a look at the nose of this. So I measured the inside of this and it was a couple inches short of 18 feet from the uh, lip of the door all the way uh, up to here. So that's uh, pretty good. I guess we'll just take a couple of quick measurements here. I did want to talk about that a little bit. So one of the things I wanted to do with this trailer is uh, possibly put a car in it, but it has barn doors. So that's touch in there. So it's 22 inches. It's uh, basically where it bevels down. And uh, the rough opening of the door is like a 73 and three quarters a wide. And this trailer's got a six inch height increase, so it's 6'6 six, six on the inside and uh, 
Let me just put the camera down for a second. I'll figure out the height. So it's 75 inches tall. And uh, yeah, 73 and three quarters wide. So conceivably, I could fit a Honda Civic in here. The weight works. The Honda Civic is uh, 15 feet long. It's six feet wide and it's 3,000 pounds more or less. So if you look at that, I'm like, huh, if I got some ramps out of a, a wrecker, I could probably get a car in here. So I contacted ATC and asked them if that's possible or not. And they said, yeah, no problem, you can put a car in this trailer. Then I had provided my bin to them when I asked them that, so they knew the exact specification of this trailer. And I'm like, are you sure? Like, that's like a four point loads as opposed to distributing the cargo all over the vehicle. And they said, eh, no problem, we can do that. And then I said, well, what can't you put in here? And they said, things that are really narrow and small that are heavy are not recommended for this trailer without talking to them first. So things like skid steers or a motorized fork lift kind of equipment are not good or like a drilling rig like a ditch witch or something they have trouble with that and they also they have solid suspensions so they can beat the crap out of the uh, floor pretty quick i used to haul a skid steer with a three quarter ton truck and the decking was made out of the two by sixes and you'd have to replace the two by sixes every year because it would break them all so if you got three quarter inch uh, chipboard that uh, wouldn't be so good. But you can talk to them and they'll make you a trailer that can do what you want. But it's, if you're going to do something unusual with it, you should talk to ATC first. So uh, you see where they run the wiring. Seems like it's pretty well thought out and well built. I don't see any outrageous uh, laziness or anything in the vehicle. They've got grommets wherever the wiring needs to go through. That's cool. So uh, we'll take a look at the roof. That was one thing I was a bit concerned, having a flat roof. A couple of reasons for that. One is that I had a couple hundred pounds of ice on the trailer when I bought it, and it was shedding ice on the way home, which is dangerous, and I didn't like that. But I should have brought a ladder and found a way to de-ice this thing. Just getting onto the tongue. So uh, what's good about the way they did it is that they've gone and caulked the end of the roof. It's a single piece roof and they caulk it along the edges. Whereas some of the cheaper companies, they just use uh, fancy duct tape to do that. And then the duct tape requires maintenance. Like I'm sure that that caulking is going to fail in a couple of years and I'll have to deal with it, but it's better than duct tape for sure. So uh, overall, I'm happy with the trailer. Obviously I just bought it, but there's a reason why I bought this instead of a bargain basement kind of trailer. So I'm gonna go through and change some of the fasteners on this. And uh, I think I'll be good to go from there. Oh, another thing was, because the trailer uh, jack stand was broken, I'm trying to think of a good reliable way of lifting it. So I just bought a cheap jack here. That works, uh, should work pretty good. As long as you don't bump the trailer and knock it off, because then <laughs> you'll have a problem. Because the tongue weight on this is a, seems like it's a couple hundred pounds. Like between me and the seller, we were able to get this thing on here. It was a bit of a, an effort. He ended up giving me that hitch so that uh, we didn't have to lift it any further than necessary. You want, and that was kind of my plan when I bought it was to get it hitched onto the vehicle, see, make sure he knew I was serious about buying it. And then we didn't disconnect it. I just drove away with it. And I got some mirrors for it as well. These are SEPA mirrors, 11.953. They're all right. But having four mirrors per side can get a bit confusing. You don't know which one to look at. I find this one is helpful. This one is kind of useless. And then these are helpful, but this mirror is forward. 
and I need this area here to see the wheels when I'm turning but it, it from here over you can't see anything unfortunately so uh, I had to use something I couldn't drive it because when I was driving you need to be able to see straight down the side of the trailer with your mirrors if you're seeing just the corner you can't tell if anybody's behind you and you can't change lanes you need to be able to see straight down and then you can kind of wiggle around in your lane and know what's going on so uh, I bought it without the mirrors but then within 20 minutes I went and picked up a set of mirrors so uh, hopefully you find this uh, video helpful and uh, I'll probably post some videos along the way as I use this trailer so uh, thank you for watching